ABC 10. Major League Baseball as the Philadelphia Phillies take on the New York Mets. Followed by News 10 and The Tonight Show with Jay Leno. This year, Unsolved Mysteries will be moving a little faster. We're smoking. New Unsolved Mysteries, Friday, October 20th. <laughs> Baseball night in America. On a beautiful night at Shea Stadium in New York, the New York Mets are hosting the Philadelphia Phillies. Well, hi, everybody. I'm Bob Murphy, and with me tonight, a man who caught successfully for 16 years in the major leagues, Rick Cerrone. Nice to be with you again. Well, Murphy, it's always great to be back in Shea Stadium, and tonight we get an opportunity to see the Philadelphia Phillies. They've had a roller coaster season, starting off great, and somehow, Murph, they're still in the wild card race. I'll say they are. They're three games behind right now, trailing the Dodgers and the Astros. And I think a little move that they made earlier in July, they moved Greg Jeffries to first base. He's been swinging the bat extremely well, hitting over 300 now. Here we see him hitting for the cycle just three weeks ago on Baseball Night in America. And Jim Eisenreich has been standing awfully tall for Philadelphia. I think Eisenreich probably, Murph, has been the most consistent of their hitters. Look at what he's doing against right-handed pitching throughout the year, 338, and he's been hot of late, 16 of his last 20 ball games. Dallas Green, the manager of the Mets, on the other side of the coin, has been going with young players. First baseman Rico Bronia hitting his 19th home run of the major league season. The young Mets are doing awfully well. And you said it, Murph, the young Mets. They're nobody's patsy in the National League anymore. The contenders have been coming in one at a time. The Dodgers have come in, they got swept. Colorado Rockies, they lost three out of four here. The Phillies hope that trend doesn't continue. Jason Isringhausen, one of the exciting young pitchers on the mound tonight at facing a left-hander, young Michael Mims. Well, Jason Isringhausen, there you see six and two, three one one ERA. Combined in the minor league stats, he's won over 17 ball games. So here at Shea Stadium on a beautiful fall like night, we should have a good one. Now let's go to Hannah Storm. Everybody, I'm Hannah Storm. Welcome to Baseball Night in America, brought to you by Chevrolet. A matchup of the two best records in the American League highlights tonight's games as Boston is in Cleveland. In the American League wildcard race, the Yankees' Bernie Williams is starting in center field tonight, while his wife is in Puerto Rico with their newborn girl. Hurricane Maryland has postponed his trip home until Sunday after the Yankees game. New York, meanwhile, in Baltimore tonight, tied atop the wild card standings with the Mariners, who face the White Sox. The National League has its own marquee matchup. Ron Gant and the Reds face his former team, Atlanta. Gant is batting 410 games against his ex teammates. Meanwhile, the only race in the National League is in the West, and the wild card up for grabs, too. The Dodgers, who trail the Rockies by a game in the division race, lead the wild card standings, and they're in St. Louis. Houston visits Montreal. Just 17 days left in the regular season, and only three teams officially eliminated from the playoff races. We'll send you out for the first pitch and all the action after these messages from your local station. Catch Eagles football Sunday at 1 here on NBC2. Now here is tonight's Budweiser Phillies starting lineup. Mickey Morandini will be at second base and batting leadoff for the Philadelphia Phillies. The number two hitter, the veteran center fielder Andy Van Slyke. First baseman Greg Jeffries batting third. Mark Whitten in right field, the cleanup batter. Charlie Hayes at third, hitting number five. Jim Eisenreich in left field batting sixth. Mike Lieberthal, the catcher, will hit seventh. Kevin Stocker at shortstop batting eighth. And on the mound with a record of eight wins and five losses, left-hander Michael Mims. Here we can look at Jason Isringhausen, six and two on the season for the Mets, nine and one before he was called up with Norfolk in the International League. He's gonna feature a very sneaky fastball, a lot of life on it, late life. A knuckle curveball, it doesn't act like a knuckleball, but it has good bite, a, a 12 to six break, and an occasional changeup. 
And the opening pitch of the game by Jason Isringhausen. And he starts him off with a fastball, strike one. Mickey Morandini having a good year. Morandini hitting at 289. And in the month of August, he hit 323. That's high and away, one ball and one strike. And Murph, I think it's just like any other right handed pitcher. If they can establish their fastball early in the game, it sets up their breaking ball later in the ball game. There's the breaking ball, one ball and two strikes. He throws what is known as a knuckle curve. It's actually a curveball. He gets the name from the way he holds the curveball to throw it. Yeah, one finger is actually, his nail is in it and it stays off the baseball. Just his fingernails on it. Strike him out, swinging. Morandini goes down swinging, one man down. And the defense tonight for the Mets, Damon Buford being left field, Ryan Thompson in center field, Carl Everett, he has seven outfield assists coming into tonight, he'll be in right. Tim Bogart gets the start, Butch Husky's down with a little injury at third base, Jose Vizcaino at, Vizcaino at short, Jeff Ken at second, Rico Bronia, and he can pick it all day long at first base. And I think the Mets are very happy, Murph, to have Todd Hundley behind the plate. Oh, it is such a gift to get him back. It's like the Phillies going without Darren Dalton. The Mets had to go without Todd Hundley for two months. He has just come back into action. The veteran Andy Van Slyke is the hitter. It's been a pleasure watching him over the years. Curveball, a good one by Isringhausen, and a two-strike count on Andy Van Slyke. Todd Hundley is a young catcher. This is a breakout season for him. He has enough power to be a four or a five hitter in your batting order throughout the year. And he is young and talented. Line drive, base hit to right field for Andy Van Slyke. So Andy hits a two strike pitch into right field. And there is the first hit off Jason Isringhausen. Isringhausen is from Illinois. His home actually is closer to St. Louis than it is to Chicago. He's out of Brighton, Illinois. As we look at Dallas Green, what a job he has done with his coaches and this young ball club the second half of the year. The Mets are 33 and 26 since the All-Star break. Jeffrey is the hitter. In for a strike call. The Mets brought Jake, Greg Jeffries up through their farm system. He broke in here. They know what a good hitter he is. Yeah, the toughest place is to find where to play Greg Jeffries, and he seems very comfortable at first base. Striking ball inside. Joe Torre moved him to first base when he was with the St. Louis Cardinals. It should be pointed out in Greg's defense. He didn't make an error playing left field for the Philadelphia Phillies. No, the, the reason he's in that lineup, he can swing the bat from both sides of the plate, and at first base, he's a little more comfortable. He's relaxed, and he's swinging the bat better now. Over for a strike call. And Jeffries played on the infield. Most of his errors, Rick, came on throws. Not, it wasn't because of his hands, so when he moved to first base, he had good hands and he took to the position very naturally. One ball, two strikes. Ground ball hit down to first foul ball, no play. I would really like to see Jason. He's getting his breaking ball early in the first inning. Two weeks ago, Murph, we did the ball game. Emory struggled getting that curveball over. Gave up two runs against the Padres in the first inning. Here you see right off, right out of the bat, right from the bullpen, he's got his curveball working to go along with his sneaky fastball. The young right-hander making his 11th start since coming up from AAA. And a half-swing foul ball that goes into the crowd down the left field line. The Mets have three outstanding young pitchers. Jason Isringhausen, the young left-hander Bill Pulsifer, Pulsiver has been shut down for the remainder of the year. He'll miss his last three starts with a tender elbow. And they have Paul Wilson who comes up to spring training next year. That's Pulsiver. Well hit the foul deep down the right field line and out of play. Bill Pulsiver will not start any more games this year, but he had a sensational year. He wound up with 220 innings counting his minor league innings and his major league innings. So Dallas Green and his pitching coach Greg Pavlik felt that was enough. Ground ball back to the mound. Isringhausen to Viscaino and now to Bronya. Double play. One, a 6 3 for the double play. Middle of inning one, no score at Shea Stadium. Now here is Shea. Here is tonight's Budweiser Mets starting lineup. 
with Damon Buford playing left field and batting leadoff for manager Dallas Green. Jose, Jose Vizcaino at shortstop at second. Carl Everett in right field hitting third. Jeff Kent is the cleanup batter playing second. Rigo Bronya hits number five and plays first. Then Todd Hundley the catcher, followed by Ryan Thompson in center field. Tim Bogar playing third. And the pitcher, Jason Isringhausen, will be batting ninth. Michael Mims will get a start tonight. He hasn't started since Jul July 23rd. It's been a long time, but he's had very good success, Murph, against the Mets, 2-0 on the season. Both well-pitched ball games. And that's probably what made uh, Jim Fergosi to go to his left-hander tonight, the success he's had previous to, against the Mets. And a young right-hander, Mike Grace, was scheduled to take the start, but his shoulder troubles him. And so Michael Mims steps in and takes the start. Mims had a marvelous first half of the year. It has been something of a struggle in the second half. And leading off, Damon Buford, the left fielder. Low outside, one ball and no strikes. Michael Mims is quite a story. He had been released by the Dodgers, played for an independent team in St. Paul. And it's over for a strike call. He did very well. The Expos signed him. They sent him to double A. He was 11 and four. And then he was taken in the rule five draft by the Philadelphia Phillies. That's hit of the air, the right field fairly deep. Moving back is Mark Whitten, and he takes it for the out. So Buford has flied to right, one out and nobody on. The defense for the Phillies tonight, Eisenreich, Van Slyke, and Whitten. Watch out for the throwing arm for Whitten in right field, one of the best in baseball. Behind the plate, Mike Lieberthal. Look at that, since Darren Dalton has gone out, opposition has been successful. 23 of their last 24 steals. Lenny Webster shares duty with Mike. He'll look to try to cut that back tonight. And the Mets, one good thing, the Mets don't run that much as a team. Jose Vizcaino hitting at 274. Dallas Green considers Vizcaino his most valuable player the second half of the year. He has 51 RBIs. And that is a lot from your shortstop unless you're a Cal Ripken or somebody like that. Taken outside, two balls and no strikes. And Michael Mims missing inside. When Mims ran into trouble with Rick Cerrone, it was more a lack of control than anything else as we look at Johnny Padres and Larry Boa. And he owes an awful lot of his success to Johnny Padres, the master of teaching the changeup. And a strike call, three and one. And that's really Michael Mims' job. He uses a lot of changeups, keeps the right-hand hitters off balance, and when you fall behind, you have to come in with the fastball. And there is a fastball in the outside corner, three and two. I guess Frank Viola was one of the first to really prosper after learning that changeup from Johnny Padres. Yeah, that's, I'll tell you, what it does, it throws the hitter's timing off, and it's more of a field. You keep the same arm action, don't slow up your delivery. Swung on and missed, it gets away, and he'll arrive at first base. So this guy Ando strikes out, but is on first base. The ball got by the catcher, Mike Lieberthal. That probably will be a pass ball instead of a wild pitch. We'll quick look at the replay. Yeah, three, two, change up. Here it is, you gotta stay down, right between the wickets. You see Mike was a little slow getting down on both knees. That's what they talk about. You have to get the glove down on the ground and try to use your body to block the ball. But again, Michael Mims, 3-2, his best pitch is changeup. Pitch was in the dirt, so we will assume they'll score a wild pitch and not a pass ball. The hitter is the right fielder, young Carl Everett. And the pitch taken for a strike call to the outside corner. Over the last 10 games, Everett hitting at 3 at 21, 381. Everett is having a remarkable turnaround. Started the year, couldn't buy a hit, went to AAA. Improved a lot under Toby Harrow, the manager there, and I said Wells is coming back. Just missing the outside corner, one ball and one strike. And speaking to Carl before the ball game, he said, you know, I'm just a little more selective, I'm a little more patient at the plate, and the next thing you know, Rick, I'm hitting 2-0, 2-1 all the time, rather than when I first was up here, it seemed like always 0-2 counts. Ground ball hit over the mound, moving quickly. Morandini steps on second, throws on to first, double play. Both teams turn one in the opening inning of the ball game. For New York, no runs, no hits, nobody left on. After one inning at Shea, no score. Whitten leads off against Jason Isringhausen in the second. General Manager Lee Thomas sent Dave Hollins to the Red Sox and acquired in the trade Mark Whitten. Inside low, ball one. 
Nice job by Morandini on the double play. Didn't commit himself too early. Stayed close to the bag. Had to make up his mind. He's going to stay close to the bag and get the double play. That's it in the air to straight away center field. Ryan Thompson, the center fielder, moving in. One man down. Toyota and their full line of quality cars and trucks. Toyota, I love what you do for me. Network MCI, how to get modern communications technology working for your business. And the makers of Advil. Philly third baseman Charlie Hayes now will face Jason Isringhausen. No score, second inning at Shea. Kind of a hint of fall in the air tonight. It's a beautiful and a comfortable evening. Those who came to the game care wearing a light jacket or maybe a sweater. Good fastball, strike one call. Charlie Hay is a solid pro, hitting 279 with 10 homers and 80 RBIs. The one thing surprising about the Philadelphia Phillies this year, Rick Cerrone, how few home runs they have hit. Yeah, last in the major leagues in home runs, and you have to contribute a little bit to the injuries. Jim Fergozzi's done a remarkable job just to keep them in the race. They're still battling for the wild card. Ground ball hit right at second baseman Jeff Kent. And he'll throw on to Rico Bronia, two up and two set aside. Phillies were amazing. On the 25th of June, they had a 37 and 18 record. They led the National League East by five games. Then came a terrible spiral downward. They won 12 and lost 34. Everybody thought they were dead in the water. But lo and behold, Jim Fergosi got it all back together again. They won 10 out of 12. They actually fought their way to the top of the wild card race. Since then, they've dropped back a couple of games. Yeah, and, <laughs> you know, they've lost Dalton from behind the plate, their big home run producer. They've lost Dykstra for practically the entire season. His five starters that he counted on coming out of spring training have all been on the disabled list. He's used 26 pitchers this year. That's the all-time Philly record. And the pitch over for a strike on no team has been hit any harder by injuries yeah. than the Phillies. And Jim Fergozzi said, hey, Rick, where would Atlanta be right now if they lost all five of their starters? Line drive towards center field. That's a base hit. So Jim Eisenreich, a lifetime 337 hitter against the New York Mets, has singled to center field. He is a good-looking hitter and a ball player. Yeah, exactly. yeah, I mentioned how he doesn't try to do too much as a hitter. Watch. Good pitch down and away. If he tries to pull this ball, it's a little ground ball to second base. But he takes the changeup down, guides it into center field. That's a professional hitter. Mike Lieberthal, the catcher, was called up from Scranton Wilkesboro when the Iron Man and the mask, Darren Dalton, went down with an injury. Take it outside, one ball and no strikes. You know, Marv, sometimes that sounds very simple. Just try to take what the pitcher is going to give you. But too many hitters try to force the issue, thinking home run, extra base hits on balls that you can't do that on. Well, you want to get it done so badly. Now that misses the inside corner. Two balls and no strikes to the catcher, Mike Lieberthal. Lieberthal hitting at 192 on 5 for 26. He has been in only 10 games. Boy, how the Phillies miss Darren Dalton and Lenny Dykstra. The last few years, pretty much the way Dykstra went, the Phillies went. Hit hard toward the middle. That's a base hit to center field. So Lieberthal shattered his bat, but hit it through the middle and singles to center. So with two men out, back-to-back -back singles for Philadelphia, it'll bring up Kevin Stocker. Yeah, when you have that bingo number going, Murph, <laughs> you know that 0192, I-92, you'll take that base hit up the middle. Any way you can get on base, that base hit, now it looks like a line drive in the scorebook. Shattered, bad or not, you're happy to get it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Now you have the free day. It's a free day from here on in. If you get yourself another one, great. Kevin Stocker, who had such a marvelous year, his first year up from Scranton Wilkesboro when he joined the Phillies. Solid player, batting at 224 on the year. Now two outs and two on in the second. So Jason Isringhausen has a big out to get right here. The pitcher is due up next. And to me, this has got to be the toughest position in any batting order to hit. Eighth in the National League. You have the pitcher on deck. Pitcher just constantly tries to tease you with pitches. There's the knuckle curveball inside low. One ball and no strikes. Got that pitcher on deck. Okay. You know, they take that 5 o'clock batting practice against 40-mile-an-hour pitches. It's a little different when you have Major League arms out there. First time the Phillies came to Shea Stadium this year, 
They swept a four-game series. That's foul back up into the crowd and out of play. The last time the two teams met was at the Vet in Philadelphia, and the Mets swept a three-game series. They played ten games so far this year, with the Phillies winning six and the Mets winning four. Kevin Stocker, the hitter, with a one-ball, one-strike count. 22-year-old Jason Isringhausen on the mound for New York. There's the curveball inside. This has been quite a year for the young Jason Isringhausen. When the season started, he was a double A at Binghamton, New York. He won two and lost one. He was promoted to triple A Norfolk. He won nine and lost only one. He won his first nine. Was the starting pitcher in the International League All-Star game. Bounced foul of no play off the shin guard of Todd Hundley. So it's two and two. And now here is Isringhausen making his 11th start in the major leagues. So that's quite a year. You win a double A, you win a triple A, and he has a winning record in the major leagues. And he has probably three more starts on the major league level. A lot to build on. The Mets have a lot of hope for the future. Next couple of years, a lot of young talent. They saved a lot of money by trading Benny and Saber Hagen. They can fill the positions they need next year with that money. Struck him out, swinging in the side retire. No runs, two hits and two left. So the score in the middle of the second. No score here at Shea Stadium. Sunday, NBC Sports presents an exciting NFL doubleheader beginning at 12.30 Eastern Time with the NFL on NBC. Featured on our doubleheader lineup, most of you will see Steve Young, Jerry Rice, and the Super Bowl champion San Francisco 49ers, host Drew Bledsoe, ben, ben Coates, and the New England Patriots. In our early games, most of you will see an AFC West showdown between the two teams off to fast starts at 2-0. Jeff Hostetler and the Raiders battle Steve Bono and the Chiefs. Others will see Junior Seau and the San Diego Chargers visit the Philadelphia Eagles or regional action. Then in game two, most of you will see the New England-San Francisco matchup on regional action. Check your local listings. It all gets started Sunday at 12.30 p.m. Eastern. The NFL on NBC. Michael Mims on the mound for the Philadelphia Phillies. Was pitching double-A ball in the Eastern League last year. He won 11, he lost four. Was taken in the Rule 5 draft by Philadelphia. Jeff Kent lays off outside and high ball one. I think tonight, Murph, Jim Fergozzi would be tickled pink if he can get five or maybe six the most out of Michael Mims. Remember, he's been in the bullpen the last six, seven weeks. Ground ball hit towards short. Cut off by Charlie Hayes. Now the throw, he got him. One man away. So one out and nobody on. We're in the second. Who says Charlie's getting a little old? Look at the range. The ball wasn't hit that hard, but it's a lot tougher play for the shortstop to make charging that ball. Charlie Hayes did a nice job cutting it off and making the throw the first. The New York Mets first baseman Rico Bronia will stand in. Bronia leads the Mets in home runs with 19, leads in RBIs. And a fly ball looped over toward the left field line. Eisenreich getting to it on the first stop. Bronia will try it for second. The throw from Eisenreich, the slide, safe at second base. Bronia, a left-hand hitter, looping a drive down the left field line. That was kind of daring base running. Eisenreich got over there and got in a hurry. That's a nice play. Look, Bronia doesn't try to pull the ball, hits it where it's pitched. Eisenreich does a nice job. Gets to it and makes a strong, accurate throw, but give Bronya the credit. He, he was thinking double right from the batter's box. That's the only way he makes double on that ball. Now the Mets switch hitting catcher, Todd Henley, will be coming to bat. Todd has really hit well since coming off the DL. Todd hitting 425 in 10 games since coming back from the disabled list. Ball by Michael Mims is a strike goal. Only hitting 311 as a right hand batter this year and 295 hitting left. And that's probably, Murph, the biggest change I can remember in Todd playing together in 91. Really struggled from the right side of the plate. And a ground ball foul down the third baseline. He is a lot better right hand hitter. Yeah, a lot better right hand hitter. Remember when he first came up, real strong from the left side. 
but now he's just, I mean, he's a threat from both sides of the plate, and the Mets got to be very happy that he's healthy again playing in the lineup. I'll tell you who else is very healthy. His father, Randy Huntley, who was such a big league catcher with the Chicago Cubs. That's a wild pitch. Hit the plate, bounced over the shoulder of Lieberfall. And Rico Bronia crosses over to third. Now the Mets have a runner on third with one out. Looks like change up down again. Hits the front of the plate. You see the corner of the plate. That ball, Lieberthal did everything he could. He got down the block and it just hit the corner of the plate and ricocheted right over the top of his head. Nothing a catcher can do on that one. No, that took such a lightning fast hop off that rubber plate. It had gone by Lieberthal before he knew it. So now the infield is coming in early in the ball game, but Jim Fergosi wants to try and keep the run from scoring. Every game so important to the Phillies. Starting the evening, three games back in the wild card race. And a looping drive to right field. That's a base hit. A run will score. And the Mets take the first lead. Todd Hundley drives a run in with a single to right field. Good job of hitting by Todd Hundley. Real good job of hitting by Todd, especially down 1 2 in the count. 1 2 here. You got to protect away as a hitter. Todd does a nice job. Gets a breaking ball on the outside part of the plate. What I really like, Murph, you see the head down at contact. Too many hitters nowadays pull their head off, really don't give themselves a chance, but Todd, head focused on the bat, put the ball in play. 48th RBI for Todd Hundley, and he missed almost two months. Had he been able to stay healthy, his numbers would be quite impressive. Now the pitch to Ryan Thompson, the center fielder is low, one ball, no strikes. New York Mets surging since the All-Star break. 33 and 26 since the All-Star break. In their last 36 games. An even better pace. The fly ball hit deep to right field. Witten back on the track. Has room and makes the catch. And Witten is throwing it into first base. Getting back to the bag, all right, is Todd Hundley. But what an arm on Mark Witten, the right fielder. Yeah, when you have an arm like that, you want to show it off. You want to say, hey, everybody, you're watching. I want to show you the strongest arm in baseball. That ball kind of stayed up. Thompson put a jolt in it. Hangs up in the wind. The breeze is coming in. Yeah, I'm going to show off my arm. Try to run on that cannon. <laughs> they love to show it off. Not an accurate throw, but a powerful throw, to say the least. There's Alex Ochoa, a youngster just called up by the New York Mets. They got him in the Bobby Bonilla trade. And a foul ball back. And Rick Sarone will tell you that this young Alex Ochoa has an arm almost like Mark Lynn. Yeah, I, I tell you, and a real good kid. He's not going to be a superstar up here, but what I like, he doesn't make mistakes. I think you're looking at two of the best throwing arms in baseball. I know that's a lot to say. Ochoa hasn't done it on the big league level like Witten. But with him and Raul Mondesi for the Dodgers, to me, they're the top throwers in baseball. Tim Bogar is the hitter, breaking ball for a strike on the inside corner. 1-0 New York. We're in the last half of the second inning. Bogar has had a very good year for the New York Mets, used primarily against southpaw pitching. He is at well over 300 against left-handers. Off the outside corner, he lets that go. One ball and two strikes. When you see a, a, a young hitter with good numbers against left-handed pitching, and, and you talked about it, he's hitting 382 against southpaws, but what that tells me is he's handling the ball away from him, Murph, and he's not trying to pull everything. He'll take what the left hand is going to give him, and usually it's sinkers away, change-ups away, so shoot it to right field. And a good change and a swing and a miss struck him out. The Mets get on the board with one run on two hits. At the end of two at Shea Stadium, the Mets won the Phillies nothing. Jim Fergosi talking with the young catcher, Mike Lieberthal. I probably I guess about the wild pitch to bounced over his shoulder. What do you think, Rick? Could be. Could be that. I mean, he was in good position. Also, maybe just discussing as a young catcher about pitch selection. You know, maybe he's talking about the breaking ball that Hunley hit. We we can just assume up here, but that's that's a little touch that a manager will do. Just go over situations with the young catcher. Like Rick Cerrone, uh, Jim Fergosi, the manager of the Phillies, at one time during his long and successful baseball career, was a member of the New York Mets. 
Had a nice time playing for the Mets in 91. We were in the race right up until the end of August. Michael Mims, the Philadelphia pitcher, is the leadoff batter. Jim Fergosi was such an outstanding player, and he's been even better, perhaps, as a manager. Recently had his contract extended, and a swing and a strike two on Michael Mims. Mims has a hitter, four for 31, a 129 batting average. That's about par for a pitcher. Fly ball hit high in the air to short left. This guy, you know, the shortstop has the call, and that retires Michael Mims. Now it's time for tonight's Toyota Diamond Dust Baseball Fact. Dave Winfield has hit home runs for 18 different managers. Question, who is the only player in Major League history to hit 200 plus home runs all for one manager? That's a tough question. Uh, definitely, definitely isn't me. <laughs> Mickey Moore and Denny takes the pitch high. We'll have the answer for you in the bottom of the inning. I wonder how many will actually know that. That's well hit to right field on the run. Carl Everett, the right fielder, can't get it. It's a base hit inside the right field line. On his way to second, Morandini. Morandini now is on his way to third. He's in a third with a three base hit. A fly ball triple landing just inside the right field line. Rick, it looks like Carl Everett hurt himself trying to make the play on the dead run over near the line. I think Murph, when he when he go for the ball, the ball bounced up and hit him in the eye. Now that, that's just a little indecision by a younger player. I think, you know, you have to make a decision. Can I possibly catch this ball? If you can't, no sense diving and going for three bases. Here you can see how the ball bounces up, catches him almost in the eyeball. Oh, that hurts. But in other words, make, the, make your mind up. Do you have a shot? And right there you can see he had no shot, even if he dove, dives for the ball like he did. So play it safely, hold him at first base. There are some outfielders who really hate to dive for a ball. There are other outfielders who love to dive and will dive every time they get a chance. Yeah, it's okay. I think it's okay to dive and show hustle and be aggressive. But sometimes common sense as far as if you can make the play or not, make up the de that determination. And right now you'd be looking at Mickey Morandi on first base rather than third. Fred Hina, the trainer, and Dallas Green, the manager there, along with the center fielder, Ryan Thompson, as they try to find out whether Carl Everett is going to be all right. He may have suffered an abrasion there because Fred Heeman, the trainer, is working with it. A couple of eye drops also. <laughs> may have a little of that gravel from the, the, the warning tracks or the side tracks. And what was really kind of a soft fly ball down the right field line winds up a three base hit because Carl Everett did try to dive and get it. Yeah, you never fault aggressiveness. I mean, here, guys going all out. They've been making great plays in the field. Their defense is good. But sometimes you just have to say, hey, I have no shot at making this play. Play it safe and hold them to a single. Trainer Fred Hina wants to be sure that the left eye is all right before he says to Dallas Green, let's let him stay in the game. Alex Ochoa, a right fielder, joined the club today, but he's not quite ready to play. In the International League playoffs a couple of days ago, Joe heard his left hand sliding head first to home plate. Rick, as a former catcher, Rick Saron, what do you think about guys who slide into home plate head first? Well, that, that, that's the toughest thing. You love to see catchers, guys coming in head first at home plate. Catchers have all that shin guards on. They have chest protectors, masks. I used to throw my mask in the line so they would, would not try to barrel you over. Here you see, good hustle. Yeah, okay. But I know he's probably saying, why did I even die for that ball? Play it a little safer. Well, he really got smacked. So score that a three base hit for Mickey Moore and Didi. Let's have a one nothing lead. Phillies now have the tying run on third. The Mets are going to play the infield back. The hitter is Andy Van Slyke. Andy hitting a 250 started the year, of course, with the Baltimore Orioles. So many brilliant years with Jimmy Leland in Pittsburgh. Strike one call. Yeah, as far as Van Slyke, Fergosi feels that he's finally getting himself healthy in baseball shape, and he's starting to swing the bat a lot better. Breaking ball inside, so Esri has it. Not throwing the fastball so far to Andy Van Slyke. 
Isringhausen needs to make something positive happen right here if the run is not going to score. A strikeout, an infield pop fly, something like that. Line to the air and a deep right center on the run. Everett makes the catch. The game is tied up. Coming home, Mickey Warren needy. And now it's one to one. Van Slight getting the job done with a sacrifice fly, a well hit line drive caught by Carl Everett. And that ties the game one to one. Isring House trying to go up the ladder on Van Slyke. We'll swing at some high fastballs. That time he threw him the fastball, got it down. Van Slyke, a good professional hitter, puts it in play, gets the sacrifice fly, tie ball game. Now the hitter is Greg Jeffrey, is the number three hitter. Greg hitting at 303. And it's outside and high ball one. Jeffrey's had a slow start this year. The last six weeks, he's been as hot as any hitter in the National League. out of play back into the stands here at Shea Stadium in New York. I thought it was funny. I went down to talk to Greg before the ball game because I knew we were going to use a little cycle clip in our opening. Now, if I ever hit for the cycle, I would know every pitcher. I would know the count. I said, Greg, who was the last guy you hit the double off of for the cycle? He looks at me, Murphy, and he says, you know, Rick, he's a, I think he was a left-handed pitcher for the Dodgers, not knowing his name. I said, you got to be kidding me. You don't. Well, he says, I remember he was left-handed. Foul ball hit high in the air and pulled back into the stands out of play. <laughs> yeah, you'd think you'd be able to recite that fairly easily. Remember everything. I would remember what I ate for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, not trying to change anything. Superstitions. The cycle, how rare is it? Well, no hitters are coming more frequently. Inside low. Two and two now on Greg Jeffries. Jeffries can flat out hit. There are not many in Major League Baseball who can hit any better than Greg Jeffries. Baltimore chop over the mound. He'll beat this for an infield hit. So Jeffries is on with an infield hit. A Baltimore chop off home plate takes the bounce, goes over the head of Isringhausen, and Jeffries is on. Last night in the ball game, he slight pull of his left hamstring and this I guess for those who's happy to see him running hard on the infield hit this guy Aino tries to barehand it the only play he had but it's a good sign to see Jeffries moving down the line after a slight pull at the hamstring last night. Yeah I think when Jim Fergosi came to the stadium this afternoon he wasn't sure whether Jeffries would be in the lineup or not. Now the hitter is Mark Whitten the right fielder. He's won about six or seven games for the Phillies with long range hits. Ball for a strike. The plate umpire tonight is Bob Davidson. It is Jim Quick's umpiring crew. Bob Davidson is now a veteran umpire in the National League. Good breaking ball. Now Izzy, as his teammates call him, has a two strike count on Mark Whitman. Isringhausen, six and two on the year with a 3 11 earned run average. 11 games in the minor leagues before he got to Shea Stadium. That was all this year. Bill Pulsifer and Jason Isringhausen had quite a year. That just missed. Yeah, now from center field camera, you can really see what I when I mentioned the 12 o'clock, 6 o'clock break on the curveball. That is straight down. The center field camera gives you that real good look. You cannot quit on that ball as a hitter. Izzy he steps off. You know, it starts around your letters. If you're wearing the Philly uniform, it's starting right around the Phillies name. And next thing you know, it's down by your shoe tops. And that's fouled off against the leg of the cleanup hitter, Mark Witt. The Phillies, as we mentioned at the top of the show, are three games back in the wild card race. On the year, the Phillies are a game over 500, 65-64. The teams they're chasing, the Dodgers and the Rockies, are both playing on the road. Well, the, the Dodgers are on the road in St. Louis. The Rockies at home against Florida. That is inside DeWitt. We mentioned briefly about the injuries, but how about this? 19, diff 19 stints on the disabled list, Murph. 614 games lost by the Philly players. 
He jams him and has popped up a foul ball. Looking for it is Todd Hundley, the Mets catcher. He grabs him for the up. That will retire the side. One run on two hits. Middle of the third at Shea and the game tied one to one. A proof positive replay. Nice job. Ground ball double play. That's Ryan Thompson's 14th double play. That's why they pitched around Todd Hundley. Didn't have to give in to him. And, and that's just a routine play. Good. They handled the ball perfect and made the double play. Kind of surprising because Ryan Thompson is one of the fastest players around. But if we hit a hard ground ball right at somebody, it'll be a double play. Mickey Morandini is the batter. And Morandini lays off ball one. Morandini. It'll fly ball down the right field line. Carl Everett, after a long run, made a slide and dive trying to get it. It bounced to hit him right in the face. He wound up with a triple. At the knees for a strike. One ball and one strike. And Mickey's one of the few players, Murph, that still chokes up on the bat. Utilizes. He wants to hit the top half of the baseball. Put it in a line drive or on the ground. He held on the swing. They want the half swing checked out. And the third base umpire, Jim Quick, says no swing. See how he still chokes up? He wants to stay on top of the baseball. And with that flat bat, he starts it in a flatter position. That will enable you to keep the barrel above the ball. He has been one of the best in the National League this year with runners in scoring position. And not trying to do too much. Put the ball in play. Keep it on the line. Stay out of fly balls. He's not going to hit many home runs. And a smash to second and one hopper for Jeff Kemp. On to Rico Abronia, one man away. One to one, we're playing in the fifth inning at Shea. One out and nobody on. Andy Van Slyke hit a timely line drive to right center that never had caught, but it was a sacrifice fly and drove home Morandini in the third to tie the game one to one. Right now, the Phillies one run on seven hits. The Mets one run on four hits. And that falls behind on Andy Van Slyke. One ball and no strikes. These two teams will play again tomorrow and on Sunday afternoon here at Shea Stadium in their three game series. Andy Van Slyke lets it go. Two balls and no strikes. Andy was one of those players that had to go down to uh, Homestead, the Homestead Hobos, I guess they were being called, but trying to work his way back to the major leagues. And it's over for a strike call. You know that camp really helped out a lot of guys. Yeah, and a lot of teams too because they've all contributed. Andy was sidelined a little bit with some injuries, but he's starting to swing the bat better now. And at the knee is for a strike. Two balls, two strikes. It's one of the few changeups that we've seen Isringhausen throw behind the count. That's a good major league pitcher that can have confidence in his changeup 2-1. Slight. That is five strikeouts now for Jason Isringhausen. Two one changeup comes back with Uncle Charlie. You see that ball starts in the strike zone, but all good breaking balls wind up out of the strike zone. It's so hard for a hitter. He commits himself. The next thing you know, the ball's in the dirt. Rick Sorona, love to hear you say Uncle Charlie. There was a time in baseball, everybody called the curveball Uncle Charlie. <laughs> Uncle Charlie. Oh boy. That's why I'm sitting up here. <laughs> that one got me out of the game. <laughs> and Uncle Charlie has sent a lot of players home early. <laughs> Round ball, base hit through the hole for Greg Jeffries. So Jeffries, who swings the bat so well, is now two for three as he singles to right. And the Phillies have eight hits. They have out hit New York eight to four. He brings up Mark Witten, the right fielder. Rip Sewell years ago, he used to say about pitching, you put a little on, you take a little off, and then you throw him Uncle Charlie. Yeah. <laughs> well, they put them on and take them off. I really believe in that. Fastball changeup, if you have those two good pitches, you can win consistently in the major leagues. Ground ball hit toward the hole. That's a base hit going into right field. Jeffries will turn and stop at second base. And now, back-to-back -back singles coming with two men away. Phillies did that once before in this ball game tonight. Yeah, most of their hits have been with two outs. What they need to do is get that big two out single, and the right guy is coming up, Charlie Hayes. He leads the team with 80 RBIs. Yeah, he is a punishing hitter. 
Here you see the runner on first. Jeff Kent goes all out. I mean, the Mets are, they are hustling. They're playing aggressive baseball. And you know what? The contenders are coming into town here. They're not having a cakewalk. No, I'll say they're not. It'll be maybe a little bit easier the remainder of the way because Bill Pulsifer will not pitch again this year. That's Dallas Green. Dallas Green, who was the manager of the 1980 Philadelphia Phillies when they won the world championship. Terrific man to be around. Charlie Hayes, the hitter. Foul ball. That's straight back and out of play. Dallas Green has put together a real solid, hard-working coaching staff. And they've taken this young group of ball players and really applied a lot of pressure and they've come up with a lot of pride of themselves. They now believe they can play this game. Yeah, it's a good reflection on the manager also. Absolutely. He's got them working hard and playing well. And a strike call to Charlie Hayes. Now Izzy has a two strike count. The Phillies three games back in the wild card race. So far tonight, the Dodgers are winning. The Rockies are tied with the Marlins. Bob, what's your thinking on the wild card? Good for baseball? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm in favor of it. Breaking ball outside low. You know, in 1969, they went to divisional play. And the purists in baseball all said, oh, this is terrible. It's going to ruin the game. It turned out to be probably the best thing that ever happened to baseball when they went to divisional play. It was bad enough to finish ninth and tenth. So divisional play was really welcome. Right. More cities are involved. The players are focused. Did he get him? He checked the half swing. No, he didn't swing. The first base umpire, Larry Ponsino, says no, he did not swing. He could have fooled me. Breaking ball again in the dirt. Looks like Charlie's committed himself. It always on replays looks like the hitter goes. I like to give those hitters the benefit of the doubt. Dallas stays calm <laughs> through all of that. Now it's two and two on Charlie Hayes. Jeffries and Whitner on base. Ground ball hammered to short. This guy has got it. Throws to Kent. Force play. And the inning is over. Phillies threatened but failed to score. And now halfway through, middle of the fifth. One to one. Cal Ripken has taken the field reliably for so long that sometimes we may overlook his excellence. Be it his all-star debut at shortstop in 1983 at the young age of 22, or his 1991 all-star game MVP performance. For 12 consecutive years now, Cal has started the all-star game at shortstop, establishing yet another major league record. of the fifth inning at Shea Stadium, the Mets and Phillies tied one to one. The Phillies have out hit the Mets nine to four, but they have had seven left on base already over the first five innings. Tom McCraw <laughs> talking with Ryan Thompson, the center fielder. I'd say the hitting in, hitting instructor on a major league team is more like a big father figure. He's tell, he's pumping them up. He says, hey, all right, you hit the double plate. Don't hang your head. Let's stay focused. You have two more big at bats late in the ball game. Tim Bogar is the hitter. Foul ball, no play for Lieberthal. That'll be back in the crowd. And a two strike count on Tim Bogart. Bogart hitting at 289 on the year. And he's hit a ton against Southpaw pitching this year. So far tonight, nothing against Michael Mims. Jamming, foul ball back into the crowd. Kind of holding a strike, too. What a delightful evening, Rick Sarone. Kind of like a hit of fall in the air. That's beautiful weather. We've had a tremendous summer. Just a couple of weeks of real hot weather, but you wake up nowadays, you think you're in San Diego. A week ago, I was. <laughs> <laughs> I envy you. San but you know what? That's such beautiful temperature. Talking about Tom McCraw and, and the psychology that goes into being a hitting instructor, people don't realize he's here at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. He's always talking to his hitters. And Bogart goes down swinging at a changeup from the left-hander, Michael Mims. For Mims, that will be his second strikeout. Next Friday night in primetime at 8 p.m., join NBC Sports as the playoff races heat up on Baseball Night in America. You'll see these same Phillies 
who are battling for that lone National League wild card spot, host Barry Larkin, Reggie Sanders, and the rest of the National League Central leading Cincinnati Reds. That's the Phillies and Reds next Friday at 8 p.m. Eastern on Baseball Night in America here on NBC. Reds are winning 2-1 to one in their game tonight with Atlanta. Jason Isringhausen getting a time at bat. Jason reached on a walk leading off the third inning, but he did not come around to score. The game is 1-1. One to one. one ball, two strikes down Isringhausen. He's got a pretty good looking swing, I think, Rick. I think yeah. one of these days he may be a pretty good hitting pitcher. Yeah, no, he, he's got a nice swing. He doesn't get cheated. Looks like he has an idea up there, but if you're Jim Fergoso, you got to be happy with Michael Mims. Yeah, and how a swing and a miss struck him out. You know, Michael Mims not starting since July 23rd. He was hoping to get maybe five or six. <laughs> He's pitching like he did the first half of the year. And now this is the equalizer. You see the curveball all of a sudden? <laughs> That's the equalizer for a pitcher. Michael Mims trying to snap a four-game losing streak here tonight. And a strike call to the outside corner to Damon Buford, the leadoff batter and left fielder for New York. Buford singled to center in the third, one hit and two times at bat. Another thing I like, Michael Mims is all business out there. He's a fast worker on the mound. Well, I, I think you see that more so in the Ameri in the National League. American League, it seems like every hitter's up there. It's a 3-2 count. Pitchers tend to nibble a little bit more in the American League. National League, they get the sign, the hitters are in there, and they go to business. for Damon Buford. That's base hit number five for New York. Buford's second hit of the game. Oh, Buford is just doing so much better. All well, since that little adjustment in his hitting stance, you see how he's a lot quicker on the ball now. He's easier to get to the ball. You know, and that's because he flattened the bat out, lowered his hands, and it's a lot of hard work. And a lot of credit goes to that man right there. He likes to see it. Yeah, and you know what he tells him? He says, you're going to stay like this the rest of your career. I may not be around, but keep working on it. Look at the happy look on Tom McCraw's yeah, face. You get a lot of enjoyment through your hitters. Oh, sure. Jose, this guy, you know the batter. Mims throwing over. Craig Jeffries, very comfortable playing first base. He has such good hands. ball by Mike Mims or Michael Mims I should say one ball no strikes he doesn't like to be called Mike he wants to be Michael Michael Mims with the way he's pitching we'll call him whatever he wants absolutely tie game we're in the bottom half of the fifth inning and he lays off the Rockies and the Marlins are two to two in the fifth inning the Dodgers are leading St. Louis three to one in the sixth inning. The Phillies are chasing the Dodgers and the Rockies for the wild card spot. Inside there goes the runner and he'll make it to second base. Good base running by Damon Buford. He kept his eye on the pitch like you're supposed to do. And the minute that ball hit the dirt and squirted away he was on his way. Michael Mims fastball usually tails away from a right hand hitter. This one cuts. It sails on the catcher. And you see you lose sight of that ball just for a second. Take your eye off it and it's a pass ball. With two men away, the Mets have a runner on second for Jose Vizcaino. Jose has struck out, but he reached on a wild pitch and fouled out trying to bunt a runner over. Takes the pitch. And Vizcaino has reached on a walk and will bring up Carl Everett. Mims has had good control today. He was hurt by a lack of control for quite a while. He's walked three here today, walked three and struck out three. Allowed one run and five base hits. Carl Everett has real good home run power. Everett 12 home runs and 42 RBIs in only 63 games. And a strike call to the inside corner. You talk about his control coming into tonight. Fifth in the league and most walks allowed. Yeah, he's now he has 71 walks, so that's been his problem. There's a line drive piece hit through the hole. Buford, who can run, is around third, coming home. The throw coming in from Eisenreich to slide. Safe, he scores. I 
Tyson Wright made a good throw. Not quite in time to get Damon Buford. So Everett drives a run in. Exciting play at home plate. Let's watch it, Rick. And I'll tell you, Eisenreich again. Everett continues to come through in big situations. His 23rd RBI now in his last 24 ball games. Eisenreich puts it right on the money. You see how the catcher comes up a little bit to receive the ball. He didn't want to get make the contact at the plate, but he can stay in there only so long. He's got to make up his mind. Nice and relaxed, and I think that's a big difference. He's nice and relaxed. There he goes. He knows, I mean, his head is down. No tension in that batting swing right now. That's why he's swinging the bat so well. And the Mets take a two to one lead in the bottom half of the fifth inning. Chuck Ritchie, I believe, is in the bullpen right now. And this is as much as they can hope for out of Michael Mims. They'd like him to retire this hitter. Boy, Jim Fergosi right now has a lot of pitchers on his ball club with the expanded roster after September the 1st. I think he has about 17 pitchers traveling with the ball club. Jeff Kendis, the hitter. Inside low, ball one. So the Mets manufacturing a run, starting with two outs and nobody on. Damon Buford singled to left. Viscaino reached on a walk. And Carl Everett singled hard through the hole in the left field, driving a run in. So Difference it's two to one New York. Murph. The two out RBI. Phillies have had a lot of hits, but cannot get that two out RBI single or double. Good change up thrown by the left hander, Michael Mims. One ball and one strike to Jeff Kemp. Shortstop Stocker to Warren Needy. Force play and the side retired. The Mets break the tie. One run on two hits. At the end of five, Mets two and Phillies one. I've stopped playing baseball now. But my son Reed just signed a pro contract. Sometimes we go over his game. And if he asks, I tell him what I know. Like when your muscles get sore, Take Advil. Just a couple are strong, fast, and work for me. And Advil's gentle on my stomach. If it'll work on these old muscles, then I know it'll work on mine. Nothing's been proven to last longer than Advil. Advanced medicine for pain. You followed him from the first day he signed with the team. You know he's not perfect, but on certain days in his life, he has been. The night he poured in 63 points. The day he found Dwight Clark in the end zone his relentless pursuit of the streak. And you wish at some point, at some moment in your life, that you could be that perfect too. And that's why you cheer for him. That's why you believe in heroes. Saturday at 2.30 Eastern, quarterback Ron Paulus, receiver Derek Mays, and running back Randy Kinder take charge when they leave Notre Dame against Vanderbilt. Saturday on NBC. Sunday at 12.30 Eastern, an NFL doubleheader. First, the Raiders face the Chiefs. Then, the defending champion 49ers host the Patriots. Sunday on NBC. Phillies left fielder Jim Eisenreich leading off in the sixth inning. And he lays off. It's inside low ball, too. Eisenreich is already two for two in the ball game. So Eisenreich has raised his average to 320. Eight home runs, 47 RBIs. Too deep, fairly deep, big your pardon. Back is Ryan Thompson, and he has it one man away. Sunday night, be there for the kickoff of the Must See TV Sunday. First, the premieres of Brotherly Love, starring Joey Lawrence, and minor adjustments. Then, Mad About You moves to Sunday with a new one hour episode. NBC Premiere Week starts Sunday night at 7, 6 Central on NBC. It's a fly ball pretty deep to right center. Carl Everett is calling, and that's two away. Well, Mark, that's just what Jason Isringhausen really needed. He had a lot of pitches coming into this inning, 86. Good strikes, though, 60 of the 86 pitches prior to this inning. Strikes. Yeah, it is a pretty high pitch count. 
they have the advantage of having a cool evening to yeah. work here. Yeah, you can work a little bit longer, but this is something that he likes to have. Four pitches, two outs in the top of the sixth. Kevin Stocker, the shortstop and number eight hitter of the order, standing in. New York, two runs, six hits. The Phillies, one run on nine hits. 22-year-old rookie Jason Isringhausen, right in Illinois, on the mound for New York. Hit in the air in a short center. That may drop for a base hit, and it will. Take it on a hop by Ryan Thompson. So Stocker has his first hit of the night. And the Phillies now have 10 hits in the game. We're going to get a pinch hitter. Coming on to bat for the Phillies will be Tom Marsh. Well, that's a, you know, that's just a little thing that happens, but Kevin Stocker gets the two out single. The Phillies are getting a lot of two out hits in this ball game, but it gives them an opportunity. They get Mims out of the ball game, who's had real good success against the Mets this year. He gets the base hit, he's get an opportunity to use a pinch hitter here. Tom Marsh has played quite a bit for the Phillies this year, and he's been a good player. So Michael Mims is out of the game, but he gave Jim Fergosi a quality start here tonight. Tom Marsh standing in. And the pitch by Isringhausen is a little bit low, ball one. Tom Marsh hitting a 279 on the year with three homers and 13 runs batted in. Russ Springer apparently will be coming on to pitch for the Phillies. And a breaking ball, swung and missed, one ball and one strike. So Mims will leave after five innings. Yeah, Tom Marsh earlier in the season here in June had a two home run game against the New York Mets during a streak where he had eight RBIs in a four game span. Now swing and a miss one ball two strikes. Misery has throwing a lot of pitches he's had to work out of so many jams here today. Phillies have already had seven left on base and we're playing only in the sixth inning at Shea. Marsh is the pinch hitter. Six strikeouts for Jason Isringhausen. Side retired, no runs, a hit, and a man left. Middle of the sixth, the Mets two, and the Phillies one. Next Friday night on NBC, the race for the playoffs heats up with great regional action on Baseball Night in America. Next Friday night on NBC. Trust Perry on the Phillies on the last of the sixth inning. He was a player in California Angels. In a trade that saw the Phillies send outfielder Dave Gallagher to the Angels. He pitched some for the Angels and pitched at Vancouver AAA. Rigo Bronia is the hitter and the pitch is over for a strike call. Since joining the Phillies, Russ Springer has been in eight ball games. It's 15 and two thirds innings and allowed 13 hits. Foul by Bronia back upstairs and out of play. The Phillies have two pitchers named Springer. One is a knuckleball. Not this one. Not the, no, this is a hard-throwing right-hander. Originally with the New York Yankees, went over to the Angels in the Jim Abbott trade that sent him and J.T. Snow over to the Angels. Springer's going to come out with good, hard fastball, good curveball, occasional changeup. 18 strikeouts to go in those 15 innings. The two-strike delivery. Oh, it hit him. He was nicked by the pitch, so Bonia goes to first base. Baseball Night in America is brought to you by Chevrolet, the cars and trucks 36 million people depend on every day genuine Chevrolet. Bush, smooth Bush beer, and easy drinking Bush light. And the McDonald's. Have you had your break today? That's something that Springer definitely did not want to do. He didn't want to make a mistake 0-2, but he didn't want to put the runner on base. Fastball got away from him, hit him on the inside part of the leg. Todd Hundley, the batter for New York. High foul pop might be playable. Charlie Hayes, the third baseman over. Nope, no play. Dropping into the jacketed crowd. All weather tonight in New York. Temperature probably about 65 right now. They say we'll have a beautiful day tomorrow for the afternoon game. 
See how comfortable those sweaters are tonight here at Jay's sweater, sweater weather today. Yes, indeed. And the leaves will be changing before very long. The colors will change and they'll go from gold, from green to gold. Todd Henley, a good fastball hitter. So he gets a curveball on the inside corner for a strike. Todd, one of the hitters that likes the open stance. Get a better look at the pitcher. See how his front foot is open. Gives him a better look with both eyes at the baseball. You have to close yourself up to handle the ball away. Well hit with a stay fair and may go foul. It has the legs to be a home run. And it's gone. A two-run homer. Todd Hudley, a two-run homer for New York. And the Mets take a four-to-one lead. What a shot that was by Todd Hudley. Hudley now has knocked in three runs tonight. Hundley's 15th home run of the year. Springer throws him a breaking ball. Look at how he closes up and good extension on the breaking ball down and in. Try not to make mistakes against left hand hitters down and in. Hundley follows it all the way and put a charge into that breaking ball. Hundley's one of the best I've seen at going down and using that golf swing. You know, Murph, I mean, everybody thinks you swing with your arms, but your legs are so important in hitting. And Hundley has such a good, strong lower half, a base to drive off of. That's what keeps that ball fair. He didn't hook the ball, hit it square, and I'll tell you, that ball against the wind went a long way. Four to one now in favor of New York in the last of the sixth inning. Hit hard by Ryan Thompson, a foul ball. The Dodgers are winning four to three in their game with the Cardinals. But the Florida Marlins lead the Colorado Rockies three to two at Coors Field. Those are the two teams the Philadelphia Phillies are chasing. Ryan Thompson tonight has flied to right and banged into a double play. Low and away, two balls, two strikes. Thompson hit a lot, surprising number of home runs for their young ball club. They have hit 119 home runs this year. And a foul back. Two balls and two strikes. As we look at Todd Hundley. Well, I was on the team in 91, him breaking in, and to see him progress, I think that's what you really like to see. You know, as an older catcher, I talked to him an awful lot. He was really gun ho and he's just having a good time playing baseball. Foul ball away. He looks like he's going to be a very, very good one, right? Yeah, and, and you know what? The catching position is such so demanding. It wears you down. Todd was on the DL for a little while this year, but... You can help a team not just by the way you swing the bat, but how you call the game. That's how you get to the big leagues. And he strikes out Ryan Thompson. So Ryan is 0 for 3 tonight. That's the first strikeout for right-hander Russ Springer. Third baseman, Tim Bogart. It makes it tough for a right-hand hitter. See how Springer throws across his body, steps towards third base, then comes like a slingshot across his body. Tough for the right-hand hitter to pick up that fastball. Tim Bogar, the number eight hitter. Speed pitch taken, one ball and no strikes. Bogar has been up twice and struck out twice. Foul ball upstairs in the mezzanine section at Shea Stadium. The starting pitcher, Michael Mims, went five innings, allowed just two runs, six hits, walked three, and struck out three. And Russ Springer is pitching in relief. Foul ball back into the crowd. One and two now on Tim Bogart. Inside off the point of the shoulder. Two balls, two strikes. We talked about the young Mets, how exciting they've become. Butch Husky, the regular third baseman called up from the International League, was the most valuable player down there. Jammed his wrist. And Bogar has struck out for the third time today. Now two men away. And Butch Husky probably will be out another three or four Richard days. Jensen is ring out. Again, the, across the body. He just freeze. See how his front side kind of left Tim? Ball on the outside part of the plate. No chance to hit. 
The young Mets starting pitcher Jason Isringhausen is the batter. And he takes strike one call. Four to one at New York leading last half of the sixth inning. Oh look at this. Isringhausen trying to bunny his way up. But he wants the ball foul. Strike two. <laughs> <laughs> Try to get on base any way possible. You remember the last time Izzy was on base. <laughs> Misplayed the, the fly ball. See, he's taking advantage. Oh, he's having such a good time being in the big leagues. Charlie Will, Charlie Hayes playing way back. He said, come on now, two outs. Don't do that to me. I'm too old. <laughs> and he struck him up. So Russ Springer, after giving up a home run, strikes out three. We will return with Baseball Night in America, the Philadelphia Phillies and the New York Mets, after this from your local station. This year, Unsolved Mysteries will be dancing to a hip of beat. Get down. New Unsolved Mysteries, Friday, October 20th. Randall Cunningham. NBC 10's Ron Burke. An inside look at NFL football. The Randall Cunningham Show, Sunday at noon, only on NBC 10. If it happens in the world of entertainment, Extra. you'll see it on Extra. Hey, Extra. Catch the latest breaking news. The secret's out. Inside the world of entertainment, only on Extra. Weeknights at 7.30 on NBC 10. What moves Montel? Honest. Resolution. What moves Montel? NBC 10. Montel is moving to NBC 10. See you here, Philadelphia. Montel starts September 18th at 4 on NBC 10. Sports Final, Sunday night, 11.35 on NBC 10. Seventh inning, it's Shea. Mickey Morandini is the hitter. Ground ball hit down to Rico Bronia. One pitch and one retired. And that will be helpful to Jason Isringhausen. Rick Cerrone's thrown 96 pitches now. 96 pitches, a lot of strikes, 68 of them. But you know what? The reason their success since the All-Star break has been their pitching. The starting oh, pitching and the bullpen. Dallas Green and Greg Pavlik have done a great job. The pitching coach for the Mets. The bullpen in the last 34 ball games have only given up 15 earned runs. That's an ERA of 1.67. So it makes it a shorter ball game. The number two hitter is Andy Van Slyke. First half of the year, the bullpen was a disaster area for New York. But Dallas and Greg Pavley got them turned around. The very same people. The second half of the year have been absolutely sensational. This is taken low by Andy Van Slyke. There's Dallas with Greg Pavley, the pitching coach, sitting next to him. Yeah, you know their team ERA, Murph, is now third in the National League. Yes, it is. I would have to say that Isringhausen and Pulsifer, Bobby Jones has been pitching very well. I mean, the starting staff, they turn it over to the bullpen, and they've been almost unhittable. There was a time when the bullpen had a record of 7 and 13. That's a strike, 3 and 1. They now have a record of 23 and 22. And they've lowered the earned run average of the bull by the bullpen almost a run and a half. That's nice. I mean, it makes it nice for the manager. He has a lot of options. Line drive to right. That's a base hit. Taken on a hop by Carl Everett. And Andy Van Slyke has single to right field. For Andy, his second hit in three times at bat. He also knocked a run in. The only Philadelphia run with a sacrifice fly. And the talented number three hitter, Greg Jeffries, comes to bat. Jeffries, two for three. An infield hit on a clean single to right field. Score is four to one New York. The Phillies have not hit the Mets 11 to seven. Key hits, two out RBIs. Talk about a good base. Greg Jeffries uses his legs extremely well. And Slack is running the throw by Todd Henley. Safe at second. A stolen base for Andy Van Slyke. And for Andy, that is his seventh stolen base of the year. A little gamble. Todd makes this very close. Tough pitch to handle. But look at the great position he gets into. Gets rid of it in a hurry. Bang, bang at second. You get thrown out at second base, stealing down 4-1. It's going to be a nightmare. Yeah, you really have to know what you're doing. So now Jeffries has an RBI opportunity with Andy Van Slyke on second and one man away. Field 
and he ripped that one. Yeah. I always talk about how important legs are in hitting. They're, they're important in just about everything. Fielding, pitching. You use your legs so much. You have to have a good base. You have, some, you have to feel like you're driving off something. You try to drive off that back leg and land soft on your front foot. Charlie Lyle used to say, land on eggs with your front foot. Soft. High and away, one ball, two strikes. Did you agree with the Charlie Lau theory of hitting? Well, Charlie, I mean, they've, they've always given knocks to Charlie and Walt Reniak, but I've found two guys that never, that worked, nobody could work harder than those two gentlemen. And what they, their key was, your head has to go down to hit. You have to see the ball before you pull off it. And I, I, I tell you what, they work hard. They were up there hitting with you in every at bat. When you got a hit, it was like they got the hit. Well, they were certainly successful. Yeah, and you know what? It, it sounds simple. Make your head go down when you hit. See the ball hit the bat if you can. And a foul ball back. That's always been a question for argument in baseball because the hitter see the ball hit the bat. I don't think so. <laughs> I tried. Ted Williams used to say he did. Yeah, he said that, and I, I know. Um, I know one thing. Guys always said, "Well, did you ever smell a ball that, you know, like wood burning when a ball would be foul tipped?" And I actually did. I could smell something. The guy said I was nuts anyway, but I did. I smelled a bat, like almost a burn on the bat if you foul tip. Lined hard, a base hit to right for Greg Jeffries. Andy Van Slyke will be held up at third by Larry Boa, and the Phillies now are coming on. They have first and third with one out. Jeffries has his third hit of the game. Cleanup batter Mark Witten is coming to the plate. And he has the power to tie up a three the game with one swing of the bat here. Witten has nine homers, but of course he's only played 45 games with the Phillies. Those who see the Phillies every day will tell you that Witten, with his bat, has won about six or seven games for them. Yeah, I mean it was a great move picking up Witten from the Red Sox. He really got to, was struggling early in the season. Jerry DePoto now is getting uh, some action in the Met bullpen. 106 pitches for Isringhausen. Jerry is from Tom's River, New Jersey. And a breaking ball in the dirt. One ball and no strikes. Now Isringhausen may be getting a little arm weary at this point. He's thrown over 100 pitches. He's now pitching in the seventh inning. You mentioned about the cool evening. You can stretch a pitcher a little bit more, but Dallas Green has an awful lot of confidence in that bullpen. Every move he's been making has been the right one. First and third and one man out. Popped him up, but probably out of play. Todd Huntley coming back might have a play, and he does. He makes the catch. Huntley had just enough room to handle that foul ball. Now two men away. High fastball hitter, Witten gets it just a little bit too high. Now as a catcher, the ball will always come back to the playing field. You'll see the ball, it goes up one way and it starts drifting back towards the playing field. Todd did a nice job. Two men away and now Isringhausen hopes to get through the inning. But a tough hitter at the plate in Charlie Hayes, the third baseman. Charlie hitting 279. One ball and no strikes. You can almost see that there's not as much bite on that curveball. That one just tumbled a little bit. The hitter will see it a little bit longer. Sometimes you can be fooled, but if your hands stay back, you're still able to drive that breaking ball. Popped it a mile high in the air. It's playable, I think. Hundley coming back again. Hot Hundley makes the catch. The inning is over. So two batters in a row, Whitten and now Hayes, foul out to Todd Hundley. So in the middle of the seventh inning at Shea Stadium, the Mets four and the Phillies one. You followed him from the first day he signed with the team. You know he's not perfect, but on certain days in his life, he has been. The night he poured in 63 points. The day he found Dwight Clark in the end zone. His relentless pursuit of the streak. And you wish at some point, at some moment in your life, that you could be that perfect too. And that's why you cheer for him. That's why you believe in heroes. NBC Premier Monday begins with a hot season opener. The funniest Fresh Prince ever when Will burns down the house. Oh my God! Then we take Ashley 
throw in Carlton and put him in the season premiere of In the House. The possibilities boggle the mind. Two premieres both on NBC Premiere Monday. Damon Buford leads off against Russ Springer, pitching in relief. Took the first pitch high. Swing and a miss. One ball and one strike. Jason Isringhausen, the young rookie right-hander for the Mets, has been marvelous at escaping trouble here tonight. The Phillies have now had ten men left on base in seven innings. And a strike call. One ball and two strikes. Springer came on to pitch in the sixth inning. He hit Rico Bronya with a pitch. And Todd Hundley hit a long fly ball deep to right for a home run. And off the outside corner. After that, Springer struck out the next three hitters. Little breaking ball that Hundley hit for the home run. Popped a foul and out of play. Buford has two for three here this evening. This is the toughest for a right-hand hitter when a guy, I talked about how he throws across his body. It looks like he's stepping towards the Phillies dugout at third base and then throwing back across his body to the outside part of the plate. Outside and low, three and two. Can you hurt your arm that way? You know, that's what they're always talking about. Yeah, I know. You, know, you try to about. stay square and drive right towards the catcher. When you throw across, you can get a little arm wear. There's Johnny Padres, the pitching coach. Fly ball high in the air, pretty deep to left field. Eisenreich, warning track, makes the catch. Eisenreich on the warning track, right in front of the fence. Turns away Damon Buford. Shortstop, Jose Well, on another day, Murph, that ball's way back. Wind blowing straight in from center field. He got it way up in the air. Here you see Springer trying to get the ball on the outside part of the plate. Left it on the inside part. You see how much quicker Buford is now on the ball inside? I tell you, that little adjustment he's made in his, his swing, and that really it's a setup. It's almost like a golfer. Sometimes you struggle hitting the ball off the tee, left, right, as a golfer. Sometimes it's just in your setup. The Craze work awful hard with Buford. It's, it's a credit to him. Vizcaino jumps away, one ball and one strike. Jose has struck out, fouled out trying to bunt and reached on a walk, kind of an unusual three times at bat. Way outside, he lays off, two balls and a strike. New York four runs, seven hits, no errors. The Phillies one, 12 and 0. Jason Ezringhausen may be through for the evening. There's a soft line drive caught by Mickey Morandini. Two outs and nobody on. This copyrighted telecast is presented by the authority of the Office of the Commissioner of Baseball and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form without the express written consent from the office of the commissioner. Carl Everett is one for three. Jason appears to be through for the evening. He threw over 100 pitches. And a high hard one, strike one. And, and it's, it's the type of pitches that he had to throw. A lot of runners on base, Phillies oh. have stranded 10 guys. You know, you can, it's the type of pitches that a pitching coach will look at. Okay, he's been battling out of the stretch all night tougher pitches. He had to use an awful lot of curveballs with men in scoring position. So, yeah, they may take him out of there after seven. And if the bullpen protects the lead, he'll have his second victory of the year over the Phillies. Pretty good looking curveball by Springer. One ball, two strikes to Carl Everett. Michael Mims, who pitched the first five innings, a left-hander. With a right-hander in, it makes a left-hand hitter out of Carl Everett. And a swing and a miss. He struck him out. That's the fourth strikeout for Russ Springer in relief. Mets are down one, two, three. At the end of seven, the Mets four and the Phillies one. Eighth inning now at Shea Stadium. Mets four and the Phillies one. And Jason Isringhausen is staying in the ballgame. We speculated that maybe he was through for the evening because he had thrown 110 pitches. But Dallas Green confident that he has something left. Dodgers lead the Cardinals six to three in the eighth inning in St. Louis. And a breaking ball high. And the Colorado Rockies have regained the lead in their game with Florida at Coors Field. They have a four to three lead in the seventh inning. Missing the inside corner, two balls and no strikes. 
Jim Eisenreich two for three here tonight. Eisenreich hitting a 319 on the year. And the fastball is over two and one. It's funny how Jim Fergozzi's roster is made up. He only has one left hand hitter on the bench. That's Gary Varsha and only one left hand pitcher in the bullpen. It's Steve Fry. Fly ball hit the center field. Easing back is Ryan Thompson and one man away. So one out of the eighth inning and that'll bring up Mike Lieberthal the catcher. Lieberthal has one for three he's single in the second inning. Phillies with a 265 team batting average. And they've had 12 hits here tonight. Funny thing is, Isringhausen has given up 12 hits, but he's more or less been in command most of the way. Yeah, you know, he's made some great pitches with men on base, used his curveball extremely well. We saw Gary Varshaw loosening up in the dugout. The pitcher's coming up fourth this inning. They need to get a base runner to have a pinch hitter come up for the pitcher. There's a good fastball. He's still throwing about 90 miles an hour. Yeah, and you know what? The hitters have seen curveballs a lot tonight, and a good one makes that fastball look 100 miles an hour. Hacked foul and go back into the Philly dugout. So it's one ball and two strikes. The Mets have not taken it easy on any contender that's come here to Shea Stadium. They played everybody well <laughs> since the All-Star break. Swept yeah, the they... Dodgers. Three out of four against Colorado. Two out of three against Houston. Now low and away. They just returned from a 13-game road trip going to all three California cities and then Montreal. And they had a winning road trip. They won seven while losing six. Now low and away. Three and two. Yeah, I think this would show good. Uh, they haven't committed to Dallas Green for next year. Well, Joe McElbain has said all year long he wanted to wait until the season was over and then he'd make a call. I think if you took a poll of the players and those who see the Mets every day, they're all rooting for Dallas Green to come back. There's Joe McElveen and Jerry Hunsicker. They are one and two and running the baseball operation for the Mets. Got a piece of it, a foul ball, count holding at three and two. Yeah, I was talking to Joe Mack yesterday and I, I we were talking about instruction, coaching at the minor league level. Even we were even going back to little league. He says, you know, you don't see as much instruction as good instruction on the lower classifications. He said, now there's more teaching done on the major league level, and that's especially true because more players are being rushed to the major leagues. Ground ball toward the hole. That's a base hit. This guy ain't made a dive trying to get it. Buford throws it back to the infield, and the Phillies have their 13th hit of the game. The second best fielding shortstop gives it everything he has. Ball goes underneath the glove, the little dive. It's really interesting. This guy, you know, has had such a good year. And the Mets have a shortstop prospect at AAA by the name of Ray Ordonez. People are saying Ordonez is the best shortstop they've ever seen. But he'll have to take a job away from a guy who's had a good year, Jose Vizcaino. Look out, Kevin Stocker may have been hit by that, or it was at the bat. They say it hit the bat. But for a moment, it might have caught his hand. Showed that bunt very early. If he's bunting for a base hit, shows it early. Get that finger out of there. It almost looked like his finger was wrapped around the bat. See, get that finger. Look out. I'm a little, a little surprised that he was showing bunt with a score four to one in the eighth. early. Yeah. I mean, if you're going to try a bunt for a base hit, Wait till the last second and try to take the ball with you. But with one out, showed it just a little bit too soon. And I didn't like the fact he had his fingers wrapped around the oh, bat. Oh, that's scary. I mean, you catch your finger against that. The ball catches it. Makes it tough. And I got some fingers to prove it, Murph. I know what you're talking about, Rick. I remember David Cohn's first year with the New York Mets. He was up there trying to bunt, got hit on the hand, broken bone. Coney, I mean, he might be the worst guy ever to shake hands. He's got that one finger that's it's like making a U-turn. You get locked. <laughs> and that is in the dirt and a hitting. Isringhausen showing some wear and tear here. Stocker is hit by the pitch. And there are runners on first and second with one out. And Gary Varshio, a pinch hitter, coming up. Well, 
a stalker is going to do whatever he can to get on base. Doesn't seem like he gets out of the way. Hey, it's a slow curveball. I'll take one for the team. We need base runners. Gary Varsho, a professional pinch hitter if there ever was one. Hitting a 253. This will be all for Isringhausen. Dallas Green is on his way to the mound. We will have a pitching change. Jerry DePoto will come into the ball game. We're in the eighth inning, and the Mets have a four to one lead. Four to one, New York. We're in the eighth inning. We'll be coming right back. Next weekend, golf's most important international event returns to NBC, where intense pressure rides on every putt. If he sinks it for the four, they retain the cup. The United States wins the Ryder Cup. Their emotions run high. Look at those eyes. The Ryder Cup. Unprecedented 13 hours of live coverage begins next Saturday at 8 a.m. Eastern on NBC. Well, you're looking at the future of the New York Mets. Bill Pulsiver with the goatee and Jason Isringhausen. Exciting young pitchers. Started out in the minor leagues this year. Now they're at the big league level. <laughs> Both are just so talented. And you know, they're inseparable friends. Wherever, whenever you see one, you see the other one. Roommates at different kinds of individuals. Pulsiver is a little loose cannon, a little bit off the wall. Izzy's. Uh, very focused at the opposite to track, Murph. Absolutely. Gary Varsho is the pinch hitter. He will be facing Jerry DePoto, who's done a good job for New York, especially over the second half of the year. He's four and six on the year with a 4.19 ERA. Varsho, a good pinch hitter. Hit of the year at the short left field. Can it be reached on the run? Viscaino. And no, they can't reach it. It drops. A base hit. And the bases are loaded. And suddenly the Phillies have the tying runs on. A bloop single into short left field for Gary Varsho. And the Phillies have the bases loaded with one man out. And Mickey Morandini, the best hitter on the Philly ball club with runners in scoring position, is coming up. That's a just perfect placement. Didn't hit the ball good, but Varsho, you talked about being a professional pinch hitter. He's not going to get cheated. Went up there right away trying to jump early in the count. Good effort by Tim just just a little bit out of reach. Tough spot here for Jerry DePoto. He's a sinker slider pitcher out of Tom's River, New Jersey. And Mickey Morandini, who leads the Phillies, hitting with runners in scoring position. Fastball, strike one goal. Four to one New York. The Phillies are fighting back. The second for one, back to first. Yes, a double play. Four, six, three, and the side retired. What a big double play. No runs, two hits, two left on. Middle of the eighth inning, the Mets four, the Phillies one. It's NBC premiere Tuesday. On the season premiere of Wings, it's Joe and Helen's honeymoon adventure. Casey's hot affair gets out of control. We burned their house down. Then the season premiere of News Radio, someone's embarrassing secret is revealed. Excellent! And the season premiere of Frasier gets a new boss who creates radio's newest shock jock. I'm not wearing any pants! Then from the producers of Frasier, the premiere of The Pursuit of Happiness. NBC premiere Tuesday. Tonight on the Emmy Award winning Tonight Show, Courtney Thorne Smith talks about her first crush. Aquaman. And Jay's got a surprise. Mm. The guy says he's got an Aquaman doll. I, no, I will give it to you. Plus college do's and don'ts. Do tell people you're planning to go to law school. Don't sell out and actually go. It's a show that even throws in the kitchen sink, followed by an all-new Conan NBC Tonight. Last of the eighth inning now, Shay. Chuck Reese is on in relief for Philadelphia. He had a dynamite year in Scranton Wilkesboro this year. Reese, 25 saves, a Scranton Wilkesboro record, and he was tied for the International League lead. And the pitch to Jeff Kent is low, ball two. Paid crowd tonight of 15,367. 
Phillies have had a good year at the gate. They've almost drawn two million so far. And a breaking ball, two balls and a strike. I asked Dennis Minky, the coach for the Phillies, to describe Ricci for me, and he said, well, remember Larry Anderson, and we all remember Larry Anderson. Yes, we do. So many years, my first roommate in pro ball, he says, just like him, a lot of sliders, and there you see right up to what Dennis told me, there's the slider. Another guy throwing across his body, but he'll throw a lot of sliders. He's pitching like an old veteran, isn't he? Yeah, Larry Anderson. Now that's somebody to model yourself after. Low and away, ball three, three and two. What a timely double play. Jerry DePoto came out of the bullpen and got Mickey Morandini, or rather Gary Varsho, to bang into a double play. No, it was Mickey Morandini. Right the first time. Looping drive into shallow right field, a base hit for Jeff Kent. This was a beautiful double play for New York. The, the Phillies have just not been able to get the big hit tonight. A lot of base runners, and then it's just Taylor made. It looked like Jeff Kent had a little trouble. The ball got into him a little bit up into the webbing, but they were still able to turn the double play. We have seen five double plays of the game today. Phillies have turned three. The Mets have turned two. Rico Bronia is the batter, and the strike call. Rico has one for two, a double. His last time at bat, he was hit by a pitch. At that time, the score was two to one, New York. And Todd Huntley stepped in behind the hit by a pitch and belted a two-run homer. Low outside, one ball and one strike. I wanted to ask Joe McElvain yesterday about Rico Bronia, and here's John Franco, all-time save leaders for left-handers. But I wanted to ask him about Rico, why he's been so successful here with the Mets. And the ball has popped up into very shallow right field. Back goes Morandini. And Morandini will make the catch for the out. Well, you know, he was a first-round draft choice by Detroit. The Mets had a first-round draft choice named Alan Zenter. They traded Alan Zenter to Detroit for Rigo Bronia. Bronia was not going to play for Detroit because of a man named Cecil Fielder in right. first base. Right, and, and you know what Joe said? Max said, you know, I think just being away from Tiger Stadium, Oh, yeah. He was so pull conscious. They wanted you know, him to pull everything. Pull right everything. Field. He said he got over here to Shea Stadium, and the next thing you know, he's become a better hitter. He went to uh, Bobby Valentine down in AAA baseball, and they wanted him to hit the ball the other way, and it paid big dividends. Now he's back to where he used to be, gap to gap, and you know he's got 19 home runs on the season. So you'll hit home runs by mistake if you try to stay inside the ball and hit it straight away to center field. And he's a magnificent first baseman. He will win some gold gloves before he gets through. There's a looping fly ball in the shallow right field off Todd Huntley's back, and it's dropping in for a base hit. Andy Van Slyke grabs it, plays it back to the infield. So Huntley has his third hit of the game. A fortunate hit that time. The ball was not hit all that well. So Todd Huntley is now Three for three and a walk in the ball game. Huntley has not given three of the four runs. They had the big shift on him. Everybody playing down the lines. And there's John Franco. Well, Franco is up in the bullpen along with Doug Henry. Right now, it's a same situation. If the Mets score again, then you would see Doug Henry coming in because it would no longer be a save situation. Breaking ball to Ryan Thompson, one ball, no strikes. And my thinking about that, Murph, if you got John Franco up in that situation, you got your closer, he's warm, he's ready to come in the ball game. Go ahead. He needs the work just like everybody else. Well, he pitched last night. He got a save last night. And a fastball in the outside corner. If I were to guess, and it's strictly a guess, I would guess if the Mets score here, they would go with Henry. they would go with Doug Henry. Right. it away. This ball, that's a good foot and a half over the wall. That's a tremendous play. No way I thought he had a chance of making that play, but timed his leap perfectly. He 
He took a three-run homer away from Ryan Thompson. That's great concentration. What a spectacular play. Tim Bogar, the hitter, and the pitch taken for a strike call. Well, he may have put John Franco in the ball game with that catch. And Ryan Thompson shaking his head. I can't hit it much better than that. That was a slider away from him. Good breaking ball hitter, and he drove it a long way the opposite field. And a breaking ball to Bogar. Tough night for Timmy Bogar, the third baseman. He's been up three times and struck out all three. Four to one, New York. Mets are batting in the home half of the eighth inning. First and third, and two men down. And a swing and a miss. He struck him out four times in a row. Bogar has been struck out. No runs, two hits, and two left on. After eight at Shea, the Mets four, and the Phillies one. You followed him from the first day he signed with the team. You know he's not perfect, but on certain days in his life, he has been. The night he poured in 63 points. The day he found Dwight Clark in the end zone. His relentless pursuit of the streak. And you wish at some point, at some moment in your life, that you could be that perfect too. And that's why you cheer for him. That's why you believe in heroes. Well, this guy on the Milwaukee Brewers, Jeff Cirillo, he sleeps with his bat when he's in a slump. Turk Wendell has this thing when he's pitching on the mound. He chews black licorice. And Dwayne Ward of the Blue Jays. He wears the same shirt under his jersey for every game. Hey, Dad, pass me that lucky gravy. I told you not to call it by its name, lucky gravy. Now you've jinxed it. This place is a dump. I don't even feel like doing this anymore. Well, it's either clean up or move. This Sunday, Mad About You moves to NBC Sundays. I'm Ron Burke. Coming up on News 10 after the game, a preview of Sunday's showdown with San Diego. The Chargers' high-powered offense could make it a long day for the Eagles' defense. Plus, a big football weekend for Villanova and Delaware. John? And I'll have the Eagles' game day forecast. Plus, new drought warnings go up in the Delaware Valley. Here, how a weakening Ishmael could be the answer to our drought. Don't make your weekend plans until you see the exclusive Earthwatch forecast. I'm John Belaris. See you on News 10 right after the game. Catch Eagles football Sunday at 1 here on NBC2. We go to the ninth inning at Shea Stadium in New York. The Mets have a 4-1 to lead. John Franco is on in relief. Franco collected his save number 23 last night in the Mets victory over the Houston Astros. So now here is John Franco who has more saves than any left-hander in history. Taking over the bound. Baseball Night in America is brought to you by Pro Player. When you wear a Pro Player jacket, it's not just a jacket you wear, it's an attitude. Oldsmobile and your local Oldsmobile retailers. Sprint Business. We help business do more business. Well, Rick Cerrone, we get to the ninth inning, a 4-1 to one thriller, and looking on the board, the Dodgers are leading the Cardinals 6-3 to three in the eighth. And the Colorado Rockies now lead the Florida Marlins 6-3 to three in the eighth inning. This would be a costly game for the Phillies to lose. Yeah, especially in the wild card race. And Houston's tied up against Montreal, who's also ahead of the Phillies. So they need to put a, a late rally together. There's Mark Witten. What a tremendous play he just made. And that was really one for the highlight, though. Oh, it? baby. I mean, he was a, a good foot and a half over that outfield wall. Timed it perfectly. And... Van Slyke having a little trouble this year against left-handed pitching, only hitting 174. Not a lot of the bats against left-handers, and he's got a tough one on the mound in John Franco. In the game tonight, Andy Van Slyke has done well. He's gone two for three, knocked in the only Philly run with a sacrifice fly. Mets are leading four to one. We are now in the ninth. John Franco on in relief. Fastball, strike one call. There was a time when left-handers would do better against Franco than right-hand hitters. But he has been awfully good against left-hand hitters the last couple of years. That's a little bit because of that great changeup that he has. That's right, a yeah. A little leery to throw it to left-hand hitters. He would go fastball, a little cut fastball away from left-handers. But he'll, he'll throw a changeup now to left-handers. One ball, one strike to Andy Van Slyke. Grounded foul, one and two. 
Phillies had a marvelous opportunity in the eighth inning. The bases loaded and one out. But Jerry DePoto, who's a sinker slider pitcher, obviously threw a good sinker. And Mickey Morandini banged into a 4 6 3 double play. Phillies have had 12 left on base. That just missed. Two balls and two strikes. That's that little cut, cut ball, little cut fastball, little slider away. Two and two count now on Andy Van Slyke. Greg Jeffries comes up next. Ground ball hit toward shortstop. Viscaino comes up, makes the throw in time for the out. Tonight's Chevrolet player of the game is Todd Huntley, the Mets catcher with three hits, including a two-run homer and three RBIs. In conjunction with this program, Chevrolet will contribute a total of $50,000 to the Boys and Girls Clubs of America in the names of all players of the game for the 1995 Major League Baseball season. One out in the ninth. And here is Jeffries. He's had a good night with three for four. And the pitch inside, ball one. With our game zipping along here time-wise, time permitting, we will switch you to see the Dodgers and the Cardinals. St. Louis has just come from behind and tied that game up. It's six to six in the eighth inning. Hit hard, base hit. Jeffries with his fourth hit of the night. That goes into the left field corner, and he'll be on second base with a double. So Jeffries is four for five. Is he hot or is he hot? <laughs> on fire. And it doesn't matter swinging right-handed, left-handed, just seeing the ball very well now. And that was a little fastball on the inside part of the plate. Best thing about it, he kept the ball fair somehow. Ball was right on his hands. Just drove the ball right down the line. And it's been this way all night. The Phillies leaving an awful lot of runners on base. 13 to this point. the hitter is Mark Whitten, the right fielder and cleanup batter. Mark has one hit and four times a bat. He saved three runs for the Phillies tonight. He close it a butt. He took away a three-run homer for Brian Thompson. It was going out of the ballpark. He went up and brought it back. It's the Dodgers and Cardinals with Joel Myers and John Wathen. Our bonus coverage, time permitting, at the end of this game. Chopper going foul down to third, no play. And a two strike count on Mark Whitman. The, the Phillies have not hit the Mets 15 to 9, but the Mets lead 4 to 1 here in the ninth inning. The difference left on base. The Phillies had 12 left on over the first eight innings. The Mets have left seven. Franco's changeup is so effective because he's got such good motion on it. Hitters know it's going to come. They just can't stop. They wind up swinging at balls in the dirt off Johnny a lot. Inside low, one ball, two strikes. Charlie Hayes, the on deck batter. Phillies need to get one more base runner to get that tying run to the plate. So it's a very important time at bat here for Mark Whitten. Off again, two balls and two strikes. We saw Mark Whitten using that little thumb guard. A lot of hitters are going to that now, and what that does, it just kind of frees up their hands a little bit. Bat feels nice and loose in their hands. You don't want to have any tension in your swing. Relaxed but aggressive. Franco pitching very deliberately here. It's playable on the right side of the infield. Jeff Kent says, I'll take care of it. Makes the catch to Ben down. So Witten has popped the ball up. The executive producer of NBC Sports is Tom Roy. 
the coordinating producer of the Baseball Network, John J. Filippelli. Coordinating producer for NBC Sports, John Gonzalez. And vice president of operations for the Baseball Network, Ed Delaney. Studio producers, Lance Garrett, Bill Graff, and Sam Flood. Tonight's game produced by George Finkel. Our director, Ray Tipton. The hitter is Charlie Hayes, and a swing in the midst of the chain, strike one. We'll have a bonus coverage for you here this evening, time permitting at the end of this ball game. We'll switch you to the Dodgers and Cardinals in St. Louis, where St. Louis has come from behind to tie the game 6-6. Six to six. They're playing in the eighth inning. Right here, a one-strike count on Charlie Hayes. Two men away in the ninth inning. Ground ball down to first. The game should be over. Bronia will take it to the bag. The game is over, and the Mets win at 4-1. In the ninth, no runs, one hit, and one man left. A total of 13 men left on base for the Phillies. They had one run, 15 hits, and 13 left on. So Jason Isringhausen will be the winning pitcher. A save for John Franco, his 24th of the year. He saved the game last night. So it was an interesting game to watch, to say the least. There were no errors in the game. So here at Shea, the young New York Mets, the youngest team in the major leagues, continue their post, their surge in the second half of the year. Rick Sarone since the All-Star break. The Mets have now won 34 and lost 26. <laughs> and against all contending teams, buying for wild cards, the Colorado Rockies, the Los Angeles Dodgers, Jerry DePoto, the big ground ball double play in the top of the eighth inning with the bases loaded. Crucial. John Franco retires the last three hitters. Nice ball game. Jason Isringhausen, another quality start. Pitched real wet, well with men on scoring position. Another just a good ball game all around. Terrific game. The Mets win it by a score of 4-1. to one. Isringhausen the winner. Michael Mims the loser. Now we'll switch you.